You're listening to the Lazenby Experience Podcast with your host, Joshua Lazenby. The Lazenby Experience Podcast is a podcast to help individuals find their way to their success. Whether it's going to a four-year university, community college, trade school, or anything else, my goal is to be a resource to help you along the way. I'll be sharing my personal ups and downs, as well as tips as I continue my journey to receive my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. I will also have guests to share their stories, advice, and experiences. So come along for the ride as you begin your journey to your success. Welcome back to another episode of the Lazenby Experience Podcast. If this is your first episode, thank you for tuning in. I think this would be the perfect episode for you to come in. Um, Even though the information I'll be talking about today is going to be geared towards mostly college students. I think the information will definitely be useful useful for those who are not going to college as well. And on that note, um, the the podcast today, or the episode today, I'll be going over how to prepare for a career fair. Now, this is going to be part one of three three parts. I feel like a lot of information I can dive deeper into, but I want to make this a very long episode, so I want to kind of cut it up into different parts so you can get uh, more information or so you can grasp more information. Um, what else did I want to say? I think that's all I want to say for that. Um, so let's just dive in right into the episode. So first thing I want to talk about is the number one thing you should have while you're going to a career fair, and that is confidence. You have to be confident in yourself confident in that you have the skills to get the job that you're looking for and then the confidence that no matter what happens you will continue on your 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 path to success no matter what happens after the career fair so with that confidence you must know you will get a lot of no's as well while you're looking for jobs and I know it might not be the company saying no or the recruiter saying no it might be coming from the recruiter giving you back your resume because they don't feel like you might be a good fit for the position you're looking for. Um, it might be that they might take your resume, but they're not going to call you back, or it seems like they're less interested, or they're not asking you questions while you're while you're um, doing your elevator pitch or while you're talking with them. Don't take that um, and then be negative for the rest of the career fair you want to continue to stay positive because just because one company doesn't like you doesn't mean every other company won't like you and i definitely have experience with that so i will be going over that later in the episode so the next thing you want to have is you want to know the companies that will be at the career fair Um, whatever organization is hosting the career fair They usually have this information up on their website or through some type of app. So definitely make sure you want to make sure, definitely want to make sure that you have the information or have the companies that will be there. Next, and then I'll be going over these a little bit more in depth. That's why I just want to go over what I will be talking about. Next, you want to have an elevator pitch down. I'll be explaining more about what that is, but that's the, that's just like a 30 second spe- speech or spill about who you are and kind of what you're looking for or what kind of opportunity you're looking for with that company. Next is what you want to wear during the career fair. And then lastly, which is probably most important, is have plenty of resumes. Now I'll be having my part two to preparing for career fair would be knowing about the company. So I will be going more in depth into how you can learn more about the company, how to do research about the company. And then part three, I will be going over the resume. So what kind of information you want to have in your resume. So again, I will be talking about those two things still at this episode, but part two and part three will have even more in depth information. So first we'll be going over companies. So. One thing you want to know, one thing you want to have before you go to the career fair is know what what positions those companies are hiring for. 
You want to know what what positions they're hiring for because you want or the companies that you want to talk to. You want to know what positions they're hiring for because you don't want to just go up to them and, and ask them. They expect you to know what what positions you're looking for. Um, and then and a bonus will be if you actually apply for them before the career fair. So you go up to the recruiter, you do your elevator pitch, and you actually let them know, I actually apply for these positions as well. And a career fair is basically, I guess I should have said this at the beginning, but a career fair is basically giving you a chance to be one-on-one -on -one with recruiters from the different companies that are currently looking for employees, whether it's part-time, full-time, um, internship, or anything like that. So you're getting the chance to be one-on-one. -on -one. They're not just looking at a piece of paper or looking online at your application. They're actually seeing you face-to-face. -face. They're seeing how you talk. They're seeing how you interact with people. So that gives you a better chance of possibly getting that, jo that job that you want rather than just submitting a application online. So back to what I was just talking about, companies, knowing what positions they are hiring for, and then bonus is actually applying for those positions before the career fair. Next thing is you want to, um, you want to know what com what companies you're actually interested in. So a lot of career fairs, they might have 50, 60 companies at the career fair and they might have the career fair open for five or six hours. So there's no way that you can talk to 50 or 60 companies in five or six hours. So you wanna be able to go in there and know exactly what companies you wanna talk to and have them kinda in order of maybe least interested in and then up to the most interested in. And I'll talk a little bit about why you wanna do that um, in the future of this episode with the elevator pitch. Um, but again, you, you can find that information about what companies are coming most of the time, they might have what positions they're hiring for, what type of position, whether it's a full-time, part-time, or internship. Um, they might they should have all of that on the website of the person who of the company or organization that's actually hosting the career fair. And you should make sure you look at those companies, look what their like mission. If sometimes they might have their mission statement on there or what their company actually do, you want to make sure you know that information. Um, so you actually know if that's a company that you want to work for, whether, whatever position they have available. Next with the company, you want to have some facts prepared as well. So when you're at a career fair, a lot of recruiters like to see that the people that they're looking for to, to recruit or hire know something about the company. They're not, they're not just going to the career fair and asking, okay, what do you do? They want to know that you actually already know that that you're prepared to talk to them because you want this opportunity. You're not just um, a, a random person looking for a job. You're somebody who actually did your research. You're actually somebody who shows interest in their company and that you actually want to, you, you actually do a good job at that position. And then lastly, I, I kind of talked about this already, but have a list of your company that you're interested in. Again, you're going to have them from your least interested to your most interested. And then I would say the list should, depending on how many companies are at, at the career fair, if it's between 50 or 60 companies, I would at least have maybe, probably no more than 10 because you, depending on how big the career fair is, depending on how many people are actually at the career fair, some companies might have longer lines than others. So you might be in line for 20, 30 minutes but only get two or three minutes to actually talk to the company. So you wanna have your list together and know exactly where those companies are in the career fair because sometimes they have a map of where those companies are located. And you wanna be able to just go from one company to the next company. All right, so that's all I have for uh, the companies. But like I said, I will be going a little deeper into how to do research on companies because you definitely wanna know about those companies before you go into that career fair. Cause I remember one of the first career, career fairs I went to when I was um, at my first school, I went to the career fair, I had my resumes and I went up to the company, I went up to the recruiter, I forgot the name of the company, uh, but I went up to the, the recruiter, there was a guy, handed my resume, I gave my elevator pitch 
And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, so what do you know about us? And I I didn't do my research, so I kind of had a, a blank stare on my face. And I was kind of looking around trying to see if I can find something that had the information that I can kind of go off of. Because a lot of uh, companies might have, like, big posters or big, um, what, these big, I don't know what to call them, but they have these things where they have a, a lot of information about the company on there. Um, behind their booth so I was trying to look at, at that to see if I can find some information but because again I was my, my freshman year I was nervous I couldn't look at that look at the information that fast so I really had nothing I could say and he handed me back my resume and um, I had to go on from there so from that point on I definitely was prepared as far as knowing information about the company before I got to the career fair so I'll be diving more into that on part two uh, but moving on on it, this episode, we'll be talking. I'll be going over elevated pitches. So, a lot of you might know what an elevated pitch is, but just for those who don't, it's basically a thirty-second speech. It's like if you're going on the elevator and you're and you see somebody that you're interested in working for. How long do you usually have on the elevator with somebody else? About thirty seconds. So that's why it's called an elevator elevator pitch because you have. The time it will might take for you to get from on the elevator and off the elevator to talk to somebody. So within this uh, elevator pitch, there's a lot of I won't say a lot, but there's some things you want to get out that you want to let the comp that the recruiter know about you before they're even looking at your resume or why they're looking at your resume. So I'll go over that list, which is basically, of course, your name the school you attended or graduated from, if that's applicable. If you actually, if you went to school, you definitely include that. Your graduation date or your expected graduation date. Your major that you graduated with or that you're going to school for. The type of position you're looking for. So if it's like a full-time job, if it's a part-time job, if it's an internship, you wanna let them know that. And then you want to know what type of job you're interested in. So they might have different departments. So for me, electrical engineering is something I want to go into. So they might have a hardware side. They might have a software side. They might have energy. They might have power. They have a lot of different things I can choose from. So I want to let them know what I'm interested in. And then, of course, you want to practice, practice, practice. You want to practice in the mirror. You want to practice in front of your friends, practice in front of your, your family or First, you want to write it down so you can know what you want to say. Now, when you write it down, you're not, I'm not expecting you. You shouldn't be expected to say word for word. Writing it down is just letting you get your thoughts on paper so you can look at it. So once you go over it a million times, you don't have to say the exactly when you write it on the paper. But being able to get that information out at a good pace is what you're looking for. So you want to practice as much as you can. Um, and then next with elevator pitch, use the company. Okay. So, um, when you're at the career fair, you practice, you practice, you practice, you know, the company you want to talk to. So at this point, you're a little bit nervous because this might be your first career fair. You don't know what to expect. So my suggestion is you start with the least interested company that you have on your list. So you can kind of get comfortable. You can get the kinks out. You can feel how you're saying it. You can see if, if what you said was good. If you said what you said was bad, you can correct it and all that kind of thing. And then once you feel comfortable with what you're saying through your elevator pitch, then you can go start from the top and go from your most interested company down to your least. So maybe it might take you one or two tries to get really comfortable saying your elevator pitch. And as soon as you get comfortable, that's when you can go to your your top of your list of the companies you're interested in. Boom. Now, on to the next topic. We're talking about professional clothing. So, when you go into a career fair, it's, it's like you're going to a job interview. You want to make sure you look your best. You want to make sure your hair is good. You want to make sure if you wear makeup, your makeup is good. Make sure your clothes... Oh, sorry. Make sure your clothes are clean. Make sure they look professional. Um, so I have a couple kind of options that you can go from because not everyone has a, a shirt or a suit and tie. So I want to give you some things that 
are, um, I will say, acceptable at a career fair. So I start off with with men. Of course, the best option would be a nice suit and tie. The suit, um, the color of the suit could be black, gray, or dark blue. I would suggest. Um, of course, dress shoes. I would say a white or light color shirt, so- solid color shirt. So you don't want um, stripes or or whatever on your shirt. You want to be a, a nice solid color and a, either white or a very light color because the suit is most likely going to be a dark color. So you want to kind of contrast off of that. And then I would say the color of the tie is not a huge deal, but it shouldn't be like uh, a tie you'll probably wear to prom or to like a formal. Um, you can definitely wear a bow tie if that's what you like. You can wear a straight tie if you would like to do that. Um, so the type of tie is not really that bad. It's just don't choose kind of like a, an over the top. It doesn't have to be solid. It can have stripes. It can have polka dots. It can have whatever. It just not something like too shiny or something like that. But you do want to look, kind of stand out with your clothes, but you don't want to be, um, what's a good, good phrase? I don't know, but you don't want to look out of place, I should say. If you don't have a suit and tie, which is totally fine, because again, at my first career fair, I did not have a, probably my first couple career fairs, I didn't have a suit and tie until, um... Uh, I think I got one for Christmas one year because I, I think I was like, I need to get a suit for my next career fair and this is the best time to get it. So I think I got one like probably after my second career fair that I went to. But again, if you don't have a uh, suit and tie, the next best thing will be a nice long sleeve shirt. Uh, again, still either white or a light color. And then a nice tie. Again, it doesn't matter what tie. Just make sure it matches with what you're wearing. And it's not too flashy. Uh, Dress pants and then dress shoes. And then the last option I would say I will go with if you don't have a tie. Which if you don't have a tie, ties are can be very inexpensive. You can go to Goodwill. Or you can probably ask a friend. Maybe an um, uh, uncle or a dad or someone who has ties. Um, that's probably the, the least expensive thing you can get. But if you don't have a tie, you can't get a tie in time. At least have a long sleeve shirt still that um, light color or white uh, dress pants and dress shoes. Now for women, um, same kind of thing. Uh, the best option I would say is a nice pants or a skirt suit. Uh, a skirt shouldn't be a, a skirt you will probably wear to a club or something like that or go party. should be a good length. I don't want to give a, an exact length because I don't know skirts like that. But it shouldn't be too short where it looks like where you can see things. And you shouldn't be seeing things at this kind of um, occasion. It's still the same, those same colors. So black, gray, or dark blue. Um, dress shoes or heels and if you wear heels I wouldn't again I wouldn't wear heels that you would probably wear to a club or something like that they should be uh, a, a nice length again I don't know how big heels come in but women I think you would know what is the appropriate height for heels hopefully you do if you don't you can look it up um, I guess I should look it up but still there's there's Google so look up to see the the height of the heels if you want to wear heels and then a nice white or light color blouse and then the next best thing for women to wear will be a nice pants or skirt a light color blouse and then again dress shoes so it can be the flats or heels if you like to wear heels and I do want to remind you like I said at the beginning of the episode Confidence is key. So if some reason you don't have a suit and you see everybody or a lot of people with suits at your career fair, if you show that confidence that that you have in yourself, that you have the skills, that you have the proof that you're good enough for that position that you're going for, 
If you don't have a suit, that shouldn't be the biggest problem that you have. So you should be good if you have the confidence and if you have the skills that those companies are looking for. And so clothes, I would say is secondary, but it's still important to having a successful uh, career fair. Now, I would, if it's a professional career fair, things I would never wear to those career fairs are jeans, gym shoes, t-shirts, shorts, anything like that, please don't do that. Like if you have to save some money so you can get a nice shirt and some nice pants, do that. Um, but don't go to a career fair. I mean, I guess you can, if you like really confident and you just think you just all that, but I wouldn't recommend it. But again, you can do it if you feel confident that you can get the job with that. Okay, so the last thing I will be covering for this episode is talking about resumes. Again, I will be going into even deeper dive into what I have. I think I have a lot of good information now, but I will be going even deeper on the third part of this, um, I guess you call series, uh, preparing for our career fair series. But here are the different things or different sections you should have on your resume. So I'm kind of going in order of what you should have them on your resume. Um, I do want to say if you don't have something in that section to put, don't put that section at all. Don't have a heading and then nothing under it. If you don't have that information, just leave it off and uh, replace it with something else that I have on here. So the first thing you should have on your resume underneath your name, your contact information, should be your education. And with the education, should be have what school you're going to or the school that you graduated from, the type of degree that you received or working towards, your graduation date or expected graduation date, and then if you have a GPA above a 3.0 or at least a 3.0, you should have that on there as well. Now, if you're in high school, let's say you just graduated high school, don't have a GPA yet um, in college because this is your first semester. If that high school GPA that you graduated with is over a 3.0, you can put that on there and let them know that's your high school GPA and you don't get your um, your semester GPA until the end of the semester in which they, they would definitely understand that. Um, and then for education, I wouldn't recommend having your high school on there for more than a year. So if you just graduated and you're at your first career fair at your new at your new school, um, you can have it on there. You can have your high school put high school diploma the year that you was in, so the four years that you was in school, and have that on there, and then have your GPA. Of course, if it's a three point or higher, but after that first year. I would recommend taking it off because within that year, hopefully, um, if you are in school, you have a good, you have a, um, a GPA from college. If you're not in school, hopefully you have some kind of experience to cover for not having uh, education on there. Again, if you don't have education on there, if you do have your GED, um, I will put that on there as well. Um, again, I will probably put that on there for the first year is definitely, of course it's up to you, but after the year of receiving your high school diploma or GED, I, I would recommend maybe replacing it with something else. Next is coursework. Of course, if you are not in school, you wouldn't have this section, but if you are in school, the only time I will put coursework on your resume if it's related to the field that you're going to. So if you're a freshman, even if you're a sophomore and you're taking a lot of gen ads, I wouldn't recommend putting those on there, but once you get into your high level classes, more into your field, I will put those classes so those um, companies can know what you have experience or have knowledge in. Again, it should be relevant to the job that you're trying to get. So if you took a, I don't know, um, electric, ele um, electrical engineering course with the, the, um, the, what do you call it? The job that you're trying to get is for mechanical engineers. 
I wouldn't put that course. I would try to find mechanical courses that you have taken. Next section that can be on your resume is projects or research or slash research. So if you have done any projects, whether it's with it, I would say even if it's a project that you did on your own and it wasn't had anything to do with school, I would still put that on there if it's related to the job, the job that you're trying to get. Um, of course, any project that you've done in school, any re research that you're a part of at school or not in school, I will put that on there. Again, make sure it's related to the job that you are um, applying for. So kind of saying, going on to that, sometimes you might be applying for multiple different, multiple positions that have different skill sets that they want you to have. And with that, you can kind of make multiple resumes so you can tailor it towards those different positions, which I'll probably go more into um, on the episode geared towards resumes in part three. Uh, next should be your work experience. Uh, on there, again, you wanna make your work experience, work experience as close related as possible to the job that you're trying to get. Again, it might not be the, the, what I'm trying to say, it might not be exactly what you're applying for, but if it's something in electrical engineering that you did and the job you're applying for, maybe not doing exact the same thing, but it's in that same field, I'll put it on there. Also, again, for the freshmen who does it, who might not have a lot of work experience on their resume yet. If you worked at McDonald's in high school, I will put that on there. If you worked a part-time job, I will put the, put that on there. Um, just to show that you did do something. Again, once you start getting that experience that is closer to what you're trying to get out of that career fair, you will take those off and replace them with the ones that are, are more relevant. And then with the work experience, what kind of information you want to have on it? Of course, you want to include the company. You want to include the title that you had while you were there or the last title that you had while you were there. Um, the dates that you were there. You just want the month in the year. So if you're there from January 2018 to January 2020, that's how you put it. You don't have to put that exact date. You just want to put the month in the year and then if you are still employed there because it is possible that you have a job while you're in school just put instead of having a, a end date you will put the date that you start and then put present as and they will understand that that's that you still work there all right that is for work experience the next next thing you want to put on is leadership um this section should be leadership that you have that is not uh, job related so anything that that's job related a work experience related should be in the work experience section these are different positions that you might have held maybe of an organization at school maybe at church um, maybe something you volunteer for that you had a leadership role in this is where those that will go into or that what section that will go into um, in that section, of course, put the title that you held, the name of the organ organization, and then the length of the time you held that position. Not the length of the time you've been in that organization, but the length of the time that you actually held that position. Because I've been in NSBE, National Society of Black Engineers, for a long time, but the different leadership positions that I held were a lot smaller because I either held them for a year or a few months or whatever. So just have it, just put the dates for the time you actually held those positions. And then the last thing I will put on my resume is anything I volunteer for. Companies like to see that you volunteer, that you're a well-rounded person, is you're not just um, working or just going to school. They wanna see that you actually done anything. If you actually volunteer, don't just put you volunteer somewhere if you actually didn't do it because there's really little ways of um of knowing if you actually did the volunteer activity especially if it's like a one-time thing um if you didn't get any contact information from them there's no way for them to really fact check it but you should be um trust you should be 
uh, honest in what you put on your resume. So this can be anything you volunteer for. It doesn't have to be related to um, the job that you're looking for. Um, because I'm actually a big brother through the Big Brother Big Sisters organization. So I have that on there for me. And I've been there for a little over a year now. And I, I will put that on there. So no matter what you do, whether you volunteer at a, um, a, a, a what do you call it, a animal shelter, if you volunteer at a um, maybe a 5k or a marathon you gave out water you can put that on there and then what you want to actually put on there is um, name of the organization if you had a title and then the length of time so if if it was just a one-time thing you don't have to put a, a date but if it was like a thing that you did every month for five months you can put that on there or like once a month or twice a month or whatever you can put that on there but it was like you did once one time you don't have to put a date because it was just a one-time thing but let me go back i think I, I missed one thing on the work experience so when you put the work experience you of course you want to put that information that i talked about and right underneath it you want to have like three or four bullet points of what you actually accomplished um while you're at that job like the best things that you did at that job and again on part three i'm going to explain more of that but i just want to have you thinking um if you don't have a resume to have that on there again you can, of course you can do your own research but on my part three i will be going more in depth of that so a couple more things um your resume should only be one page if your resume is more than one page um turn back You've done it wrong. Well, I won't say you've done it wrong, but look at what you have on your resume and cut it down as much as you can to fit on that one page. Um, your name, your email, and phone number should be on the top. Your phone, your name should be the biggest thing on that paper. Um, and then your email and your phone number could be on the next line. When I go over um, the resume part, I will probably put a copy of my resume so you can see how a resume looks if you don't already know of course you can look up more but if you want to look at a resume and not just an example of Joe Smith that you will find on Google if you actually want to look at a resume that actually worked for somebody um, I will be posting that as well so you can see that as you're listening to the uh, to that episode mm. I think I talked about this already but if a section does not apply to you, don't put it in. So if you didn't have any projects that you worked on, if you didn't part of, if you wasn't part of any research team, don't put that section on there. It's just gonna be a waste of time, a waste of space, and then it's not gonna do anything good for you. And then an optional section, if you have space that you can put on your resume, is called an uh, objective statement. So this objective statement basically um is the heading statement that describes your professional goals um in in the job in one to two uh, one to three sentences so it shouldn't be that long i would i i think i have just one sentence on mine and you can make it as specific as possible as specific as you want or kind of as general as you want but the more specific you make it um the more resumes you will have to make so you can make it specific for each job again my resume do have an objective on there so a, a objective statement on there so if you do want to have it on there i will have an example of what you can have on your um on your resume i think that is all that i have for today i did not want to make this a very long episode i hope it's not too long but i hope you did get some good information from it i hope it helped you on your career aspirations or as you go to a career fair in the coming days or weeks or whatever um, if you have any questions about what i talked about today what i talked about in previous episodes you can email me at lazenb experience that's l-a-z-e-n as in nancy b as in boy y experience at gmail.com um you can do that you can im me or 
direct message me on my Facebook page at the Lads and Be Experience. I do have some good news. My podcast is available on a lot more platforms now. Um, it's available on Apple Podcasts, it's available on Google Podcasts, available on, I think it's called Stitcher. Um, it's available on South. Uh, SoundCloud, it's available on Spotify, it's a whole bunch of other things so I'll be having that information available to you as well on my Facebook page because that's probably the easiest easiest way to find me Um, also on my YouTube page which is another great way to find me as well so that is all I have for today so until next time continue your journey until you reach your success Thanks for listening to the Lazenby Experience Podcast with me, Joshua Lazenby. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something to help you along your journey to your success. The Lazenby Experience Podcast will continue to be available anywhere you listen to podcasts, including Facebook, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. If you really enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a rating, and write a comment. For any questions, you can reach me at lazenbyexperience at gmail.com. Until next time, continue your journey until you reach your success.